battled through the snow and ice this morning and uh, made it to church. Great to, to see you all. Just got a couple of notices before we start this morning. Um, just a reminder that at five o'clock tonight we have our Christingle service, which is a joint service between Cornerstone, the Asian Christian Fellowship and the Romanian Christian Fellowship. So multilingual, multicultural, um, but uh, we'll have a great time and as part of that service of course we will build and light our Christingles. In the light of which I'm hoping that one or two people might be kind enough to help me cut the tops of the oranges after the service this morning. Uh, I've come armed with my sharp knife, Julie's already waving, thank you Julie. Right. So if one or two people would just like to give me a hand with that, that would be much appreciated. Thank you Kim. Okay. And then on Thursday night, of course it's Lancashire Sings Christmas, you have the choice of going to Boundary Mill, I gather, or joining us as usual at Bannister Court with the residents there in their lounge. And uh, if you come in, you need to be there by 6.45, the broadcast starts at 7 o'clock. And if anybody would like to donate some mince pies or biscuits to Bannister Court, uh, that would be also much appreciated. So, let's get down to the business of the morning, which is to worship God in this Advent season. We'll light the Advent candle, and then we'll begin our worship. Let's see if the matches cooperate. Sunday in Advent this week, so we've got three candles lit. And the third candle is known as the Shepherd's Candle, as a reminder that the good news came first to the shepherds out in the field and has since gone out to people everywhere. But it's also known as the Candle of Joy, as a reminder of the joy that comes through Jesus' arrival and through the salvation that he has given us. Let's pray. Father, the joy that you offered the shepherds that day, you offered that same joy to us now, if we know you and recognise Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. You gave us a reason to celebrate when you gave us the unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ. You came to dwell among us. You went to Calvary's cross for us. You overcame death and rose from the dead for us. You forgive our sins and give us eternal life when we believe in you. Our joy doesn't come from our jobs, our family, our relationships, our finances or our success. Our joy doesn't come from what we have on earth or who we are with. Our joy is a gift. The gift that you gave us that first Christmas in Jesus Christ. Our joy is encompassed in our Saviour, King Jesus. Flood our heart with joy this Advent season as we reflect on the good news of Jesus' birth. In Jesus' precious name we pray. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Now the music group will lead us. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start with uh, Mary's boy child. Um, I'm going to do Joy is Born Upon the World. Then I'm going to sit down because the third song is courtesy of a YouTube clip. And that's going to be what I think of Christmas. Okay.
think that's what you call the Christian version of the 12 days of Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Right, it's time to pray then. So, let's think about what we've got to pray for this morning, particularly with our young people. Right. Anything in particular, Daniel and Emma, that you want us to pray for this morning? Anything to say thank you for? Anyone to pray? Yeah, I think all teachers need patience at this time of year. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. If not all year round. Yeah. Go on then, Daniel. And it's coming to the holidays as well. Yeah, that's another good thing to be thankful for, isn't it? Yeah. Daniel always looks forward to his holidays, don't you? Yeah. Daniel is thankful for holidays. Okay. And we've got all sorts of other things to be thankful for this morning, haven't we? So let's come before God and let's bring him our thanks and our praise. Yes, Father God, as we gather together this morning, we've got lots of things to say thank you for. We've got lots of reasons to praise you and to be thankful. Not just because it's Advent and we're looking forward to Christmas, and also remembering to look forward to that time when you come again and we can celebrate that. But Father, just the everyday things, so much to say thank you for we realise how grateful we need to be for things like our homes, our families and friends, the food in our cupboards, the warmth of our homes. Lord, so often we take these things for granted and we forget to be grateful. And yet, Father God, we realise that there are many people who don't have these things, who are really struggling at this time. And so while we can be grateful and thankful to you for all your blessings, help us to remember that you bless us so that we can bless others. We pray, Lord, for all the food that we've been collecting in the food bank over these last few weeks, that it will really get to the people who need it and it will make a difference to their Christmas. We thank you for all the people who work so hard in our food banks not just our local one, but all around the country. We thank you for all the people who have created the warm spaces for others to go to. We thank you for the people who cook the hot meal in church on a Wednesday, because we know that there are so many people who are grateful to be able to come and have that meal. Father, we thank you for each and every person who works to make our lives better and in turn help us to work to make the lives of others better. We thank you today, especially for teachers. Lord, we know they need lots of patience all year round, but perhaps especially at this time of year, as they have to cope with classrooms full of excited children who are thinking more about Christmas than lessons. And we do pray, Lord, that you would give them strength and patience to get to the end of term. And we pray particularly for Emily's drama production, that all goes well with that, Lord, and that it's a really good time. We thank you for the holidays that are coming up. We pray for a time of rest and refreshment for all people who will have a holiday from work and school. But we know it's also going to be a busy time. And we pray, Lord, that we'd get the balance right between resting and celebrating. And Lord God, above everything else, we will remember that that manger will not stay empty. It did not stay empty that time in Bethlehem, but you sent Jesus to be our Lord and our Saviour. So help us to keep Jesus at the centre of our celebrations. And Father, we know that then we will have a marvellous time. And so we pray that as we go into our service this morning, we will learn more of what it means to follow you. We will feel your presence with us and that you will bless us this day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And let's say our family prayer together. <laughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trust as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Although it is Advent and we look forward to celebrating Christmas and all that it reminds us of the birth of Jesus, we know too, don't we, that Advent also is a time for thinking about when Jesus comes again. And so this morning as part of that thinking, uh, we're going to share in communion, which reminds us why Jesus came that first time and also the fact that one day he will come again. So we gather around our communion table this morning. Paul reminds us why we do this. That the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, everyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. In our own right, none of us is worthy to come before the Lord's table. But through the mercy and the graciousness of God, we are all invited. But let's just take a few moments to do as Paul says and to examine ourselves before we come around the table and take the bread and wine. Let's just pray quietly. Father God, we come to communion this morning, not because we must, but because we may, by your gracious invitation. Not because we are worthy in anything that we have done, but because our worthiness lives and dies with Jesus. We are worthy because he thinks we are worthy. We are worthy because he thought we were worthy enough to die for. And as we think of that, Father, we come to you with all our faults and failings. And yes, with our successes and our achievements as well. But we come humbly in the knowledge that we are here because of Jesus. And so as we share in this bread and wine this morning, as symbols of the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, we pray that we come with those thankful and grateful hearts as we look both to the manger and to the cross. Father, forgive us for all our shortcomings. Strengthen us to live as you would have us live in the days ahead and help us to be more like Jesus, which we ask in his precious name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Dr. Union Service would like to come forward, please. So on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So as you receive the bread, please eat as a reminder that Jesus thought you were worthy to die for.
Likewise, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is my blood which is shed for you. As you receive the cup, please retain it. We'll drink together as a sign that Jesus died to make us his family, his church.
Shall we continue our worship as we bring our offerings before the Lord? So we come to the time for our fellowship prayers this morning when we think of members of our church family and of course of the wider world and our community. Quite a few people on the, the list this morning. Susan's not with us this morning and Jenny because they're, they're not too well. Catherine isn't with us because she's gone down with Covid. We continue to think of, of Joan and uh, Kevin and Janet and Helen and Brian and Gareth. And uh, Jimmy and Roberta need our prayers this morning. Jimmy is in hospital following a heart attack. Um, he has to have an operation. He can't come home till he's had the operation. And he can't have the operation for five weeks. So I think Jimmy and Roberta particularly need our prayers at this time, don't they? As they cope with, with that situation. And no doubt there are people known to you, perhaps within your family or friendship circles outside of the church family, your neighbours, your work colleagues, whoever, who you'd just like to ask God to bless at this time. So let's start with just a moment of quiet to enable you to do just that. <coughs> Father God, it is good to come this morning and to bring you our praise and our worship and our thanks. But we're also so grateful that we can come before you with our needs and our requests for ourselves and for others. We can come knowing that you listen and that our concerns are your concerns. And Father, we thank you that as well as being a, a gracious and a giving God, you are also a loving and a caring God. 
And so we bring before you this morning all those people known to us who at this time could just do with that extra little touch from you. Those who are sad. Those who are struggling. Those who are not as well as they should be. And we think, Lord, of all those members of our church family that we've just mentioned and how in different ways they are not 100% today. Father, we know that with some of them it's, it's ongoing issues and we just pray, Lord, that you would help them to cope with those. And we just pray, Lord, for the best outcome for each one of them. And Father, in particular this morning, we want to pray for Jimmy and Roberta and the situation that they find themselves in. Lord, we just pray that uh, something might be done to enable Jimmy to have his operation much sooner. Not just so that he is well again, but also so that he can be at home and be with Roberta. And we pray, Lord, that you would give her a sense of peace at this time in all her worry about Jimmy. We continue to pray for Helen and Brian and, and Gareth that the best outcome in that situation would be found and would be found soon. Likewise with uh, Kevin and Janet and Joan as she continues her treatment that that might be successful. And we pray for Catherine and, and Susan and Jenny this morning who are not feeling quite well enough to be here with us in church. Father, be with these people who are so special to us and whose presence we miss. Just touch them, we pray, and all those who must care for them and perhaps make decisions on their behalf at this time. Father, we know at this time of year that there are many people who fall ill and we know the extreme pressure that that puts on a, an already difficult situation for our health service. And so we pray for them, Lord. We pray for all our doctors and nurses, the paramedics, all who work in the hospitals, whether they be working on the front line or behind the scenes, perhaps in the offices. We think of the people who provide the food and the, the cleaners. They're all a vital part, Lord, of keeping our health service going. And we know it is so difficult for so many of them at this time. And we pray for them, Lord, for strength, for health, for encouragement. And Lord, we pray that when situations get difficult and, and patients get frustrated, they might remember that all the health service staff are, are just human beings like they are and that they would treat them with kindness and with respect. <laughs> Father, we pray for our community. At this time, we pray for those who are struggling and, and we have prayed with our young people. We thank you, Lord, for the generosity of the, the food bank at this time and pray that those gifts will really reach the people who are most in need. And we thank you for those people who give their time to run the food bank. Strengthen them, Lord. They must be feeling tired with all the work that they have to do and all who are working in our community at this time to help others. Lord, keep our eyes and ears open to see where we can help, in whatever small way, perhaps. And Father, as we think of our land and our world, we pray for the governments of the different countries, including our own. We pray for wisdom, for leaders. We pray, Lord, for a sense of leadership that is there for the benefit of others and not for themselves. We think of people, Lord, who at this time when we speak so much of peace on earth are living in situations that is anything but peaceful as they face the daily grind of, of warfare, the fear of not knowing what is happening next. Father, we pray for peace in our world. Lord, we will pray for ourselves. Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know us inside out. 
You know exactly what each one of us here this morning is going through, however we might try and hide it from each other. You know us so well. And you know exactly what each one of us needs. And we pray, Lord, that we might listen to your guidance and your prompting. And that you might help us in this coming week in whatever way is needed. Lord, as we've said earlier, help us to be the good news. Help us to show others your love in the way that we treat each other and those that we meet. We acknowledge, Lord, that that is not always easy. We all come across people who we find <coughs> difficult to love. But just give us that extra loving and caring nature, we pray. And so, Father, we pray that you'll bless James as he comes now to bring us your word. That we might not just listen with our ears, but also with our hearts and minds. And that we might act upon it in the way that you prompt us. Father, we are so grateful for everything that you do for us. Help us to share that with others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <coughs> so before James comes to speak to us, we're going to sing together in our worship the hymn number 292. The first Noel the angel did say was to Bethlehem shepherds in fields as they lay.
Well, good morning. Good morning. It is really great to see you. I think you've all done it. I'm switched on. So, welcome to you also. We're going to read first of all from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 11, 11 beginning at verse 2. Yeah, that's good. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, and Go back to John and report what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, and those who have leprosy are healed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak about him to the crowd. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, and I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare a way before you. I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen for anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. I have to remember to drink left handed. Well, a lion. A lion and a hyena were, uh, sorry, no, they were, it was a monkey and a hyena, were going through the, 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 the jungle and they're having a conversation about who was the king of the jungle. And the monkey said, I am virtually a man. I can climb up trees, I can soar in the heavens, I, I, can, I can use tools and make things. You know, I, I am the king of the jungle. And the hyena said, don't be ridiculous, my jaw is the strongest drill in the jungle. Anyone will be terrified when I get hold of them. I am the king of the jungle. And as they're discussing this, a lion jumped out on the hyena and they started at it really quite severely. And the monkey shot up a tree. And after about five or ten minutes, the, the lion decided that this wasn't going to be the easy meal he was looking for uh, and maybe it, it was going to leave the hyena alone. And, and so he departed. And so the monkey came back down the tree and he said, oh, that was a close thing, wasn't it? And the hyena said, hey, if you're the king of the jungle, why didn't you help me? And the monkey said, well, with the way you were laughing, I thought you were winning. 
I want to look today at thriving in challenge. Because John the Baptist is, 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 is having a challenge, isn't he? He's having a difficult time. He sent a message from prison asking about Jesus. You see, sometimes it's easy to follow Jesus, isn't it? Sometimes it's easy to go through life. Everything's going well. When everything's going sunshine, nothing seems to go wrong. But we all have those times when actually life gets hard. Do you remember the love song from years ago? I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain sometimes. And one of the difficulties in life is, well, one of the, the things we have to learn, is to keep going when it, the going gets tough. The tough keep going when the going gets tough, don't they? But it's easy sometimes to quit when the going gets tough. You see, it's easy to be a Christian on your baptism day. You're kind of like the, the centre of attention in church and it feels brilliant and you feel like Peter when he said, Lord, I'll never deny you, I'll never abandon you. You feel great. It's a real exciting day when you get baptised, when you first commit your life to Jesus. It's easy to be a Christian on a Sunday in church, gathered around with all your friends. It, you know, when we're all singing together and, you know, we've got the right tune and we've got the right words and we're having a, a ball and it can be great. It can be really, really exciting. It can even be fun when we're doing action songs and you're getting them wrong. But it's still, it's still relatively easy to be a Christian. It's easy to be a Christian when the world is sunny and all is well. It's easy to be a Christian when large clouds are flocking to hear your message. It must have been easy for John when people were coming from all over to get baptised. And when he's rebuking the Pharisees, and I bet the people cheered when he rebuked the Pharisees, because they, they were all, everyone were a bit, you know, they didn't really like the Pharisees. And so when John gave them a bad time and called them a brood of vipers, I, I bet John thought, yeah, this farm man, God's man. And it was easy. But then there's times when it's hard. And we go through what Psalm 23 would call the valley of the shadow. And the fact of the matter is, this is a Christian, there will be times when, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. We're like the disciples, we're on the mountaintop with Jesus, and we think, wow, I will never doubt again. But then there's other times when we're down in the valley, and it's dark, and we can't work out what God's doing, and we don't understand. And suddenly, some of our simple formulas don't quite work out. It's hard to be a Christian when your labour seems to go unnoticed or it doesn't seem appreciated. It's hard to be faithful when you've been thrown into a dark and cold prison cell. It's hard to be a Christian when you have to deny yourself. It's hard to be a Christian when you're not sure what God's doing, when your world is shaken. It's hard to hold on when you're facing yet another bout of illness. And you think, again, again, what's going on? You see, John had been the forerunner, the one who was going before Jesus to prepare a way for him. And it was all excited, it was all dynamic, and he was expecting great change. But then it seems, a little later, he's in prison. And alone in the dark. He was Herod's prisoner. The Romans were still in charge. And John was struggling too. You see, struggle is part of, of our life, isn't it? Jesus said himself, in the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. And we all, we do, we all have times when we face struggle. And we perhaps wonder what's going on. John dreamed. John is dressed, we're told. John is stressed, and so he reaches out to his cousin. And although he's alone in the cell, he still has friends who will take risks for him. You see, isolation is not good for human beings. It doesn't do us any good to be isolated. But if you think about it, when we're down, often our natural instinct is to turn in on ourselves. And we isolate. We think, no, I'll just be on my own. I'm feeling sorry for myself. But actually, it's not good for us. We need each other. One of the biggest, I would think, one of the biggest uh, consequences of the last two and a half years has been the sense of isolation. 
People have been so lonely. And it's good for us to be with other people. Even during the World Cup, even with the frustrations of last night, still people together comfort one another. When people are celebrating together, it's so much better to celebrate with people. But it's also better to actually suffer with other people. When we're suffering alone, it's a terrible thing. But John reaches out to Jesus and says, is what I'm doing right? Are you the one? Are you really the one? How come I'm in prison? How come you haven't rescued me? How come the Romans haven't been overthrown? How come the, the, the big revolution has not started? And perhaps it seems that John too had some, it'd been influenced by the popular pictures of what the Messiah would be like. And so Jesus has to remind him the blind are seeing, the lame are walking. The lepers are being healed. The dead are being raised. The kingdom of God is coming. It might not be quite what you'd imagine, but the kingdom of God is coming. And so I wonder, are we facing challenges sometimes? And we will, if we're not now, we will face challenges where we too may be questioned. And when we do find challenges and when we do find hard times, I think firstly we've got to learn to accept that hard times will come. It's, it's today, isn't it? Somebody said, it's really cold this morning, I wish it weren't this rotten cold. And yeah, but actually we have four seasons. Sometimes we have four seasons in a single day, but generally we have four seasons in a year, don't we? And, and you know, winter, it'll pass. Although it's horrible at the moment, and we're all wrapped up and everything's nice and warm, it'll pass. And then we'll get the spring. And then we'll get the summer. And then we'll go around to autumn and then we'll be back in winter. And we just, we, we, we get used to going around that. And life's very much the same way. Now our world is a bit set up at the moment that we've constantly got to be buying things. And to encourage people to buy things, we've got to be dissatisfied. And one of the ways that we encourage dissatisfaction is making people believe that the life, life should be painless. With no hardship. And all the adverts, I don't think you've ever noticed, right? All those houses on the uh, adverts, I've never been in a home that tidy. <laughs> you know, they have grandchildren and a tidy home. Any of you who have grandchildren know that if your grandchildren come up round, you don't have a tidy home. It's just not possible. And so what we have is we have all these unreal unrealistic pictures pushed into our heads. The ladies particularly, you know, you're supposed to have a full-time job, be a good mother, love your husband, and keep your house spotless in your spare time. And actually, if you're trying to live with all that unrealistic expectation, there's going to be times when you get slightly grumpy. And you start to feel that it's all too much. And we have to realise that life is tough. And we have to be careful about giving ourselves expectations of too much, of expectations of maybe living in the in heaven. But the, I don't think there'll be dust in heaven. But here on earth, there will be dust. And there's a good bit of it on my TV. But apparently when we die, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So I don't clean it off because it could be one of my friends. Okay, it's all right. Now, any other things are more serious. We will, we'll have times in life when we face more serious things. When actually the doctor goes, oh, it doesn't look like the treatment's working. As we get older, just getting older, but getting older is hard work. For a long while, getting older was great. I was getting bigger and stronger and faster, and it was fantastic. And now I've, I've crossed over, I don't remember where it was, I've crossed over this Rubicon, and suddenly I'm getting weaker. And I ate more. And I make those weightlifting noises when I stand up. <laughs> What's that about? Even if I sit down. <clears throat> and, 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 and nobody tells you, you know, when you're young, you just bounce around, jump around things. And, you know, I have to be careful sometimes. I can break a chair if I drop down fast. You know, so I have to be careful. It's not much fun, is it? But it's part of life. <laughs> It's part and parcel of life, and there are times we will go through really tough stuff. And as Christians, we still go through 
through tough stuff. Being a Christian is great. Honestly, being a Christian is. You all know it's great. Being a Christian, people in faith live on average 10 years longer. Because we have a hope. Because we can go to sleep. I love it reading about Peter being in a prison cell. And when the angel came to rescue him, it says Peter was asleep. They'd killed James the day before. And Peter's asleep. He's that confident that God's got things in control that he's fallen asleep, even though he's possibly going to die in the morning. And the person, the, the angel that comes to rescue him has to wake him up. And there will be times that we too will feel like, maybe like John the Baptist, we're kind of, we had all these dreams of what we were going to do for God and it's not quite worked out what we, how we expected. And we begin to wonder if we've been wasting your time. How many of you watched It's a Wonderful Life? Go on, give me a wave. Yeah, if you've not watched It's a Wonderful Life, maybe, in fact, you'll find our BBC catch-up. It's wonderful. It really is, and it's very good, honestly. We should all watch It's a Wonderful Life. Because this guy on It's a Wonderful Life, he's getting that he's going to kill himself because he's going to throw himself off the bridge because he thinks his life's been a waste of time. And, and this angel gives him the ability to, he goes back and sees the town if he'd never been born. And also, in the town's bedlam, it's awful, it's a horrible place. Because he'd made such a difference to so many lives. And if he'd never been born, all those lives hadn't been changed. And they'd become horrible. And the same is true of each one of you. You make a difference. You brighten people's lives. Every time you forgive somebody, every time you smile, every time you are generous to someone, you make the world a better place. Every time you're kind, every time you're generous, every, every tin of soup you donate, stuff you give to the food bank, every, every time you help someone, every time you thank someone, you make the world a better place. And so it's extremely important that when we're going through hard times, it's what you must focus on. Muhammad Ali said that whenever he was training, he was on a long run, and if it was hurting his body, he'd say, I focus on the fact that I'd rather it hurt me when I'm running that it hurts me in the ring. I'm having the pain now, so I won't have it when I'm in the boxing ring. And that's such an important thing. We are, we're constantly encouraged by our TV, by, by sort of the adverts that we're surrounded with, that life should be somehow perfect now. Now, we have, when you have a perfect day, enjoy it. Sing loudly and love it. But you'll also have really bad days. We all have bad days. We have good days, we have bad days. And the only time we'll stop doing that is when we're six foot under. So don't wish for a life of peace. Because, you know, I, you, you, you kind of, when you see that, you know, it's, it's an illusion. I know people who, who are sort of enjoying good health, they're really well off, and they complain all the time. They haven't learned to, to realise how blessed they are. And you know, there are people in our world who would look at all of us and think, we are so blessed. They would give their right arm to have what we have. And it's so easy to end up thinking, oh, we just look and we think, oh, well, I'm not Richard Branson, oh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not Bill Gates, I, I don't have a big yacht, I don't. So what? We have so many good things, so many wonderful things. And Jesus has to remind John about what the kingdom of God is really about. About every life being changed, every life being touched. Don't view challenge and change as, as signs of, of problems. As Christians, we've been here now as a church for one year. And it's been great, hasn't it? When we come in on a Sunday and the church is, is full and you think, yeah, it's really nice. But we've kind of passed that first year, we're getting to the end of the first year now. The next year will be interesting. We'll have times when we irritate each other. We will. I know it's hard to believe. There may even be times when I irritate. I, I, know, I know you can't imagine it. But even I may irritate you at times. No, but we will, won't we? The truth of it is, we will. You know, it's, it's normal. When you, when you remember, when you would go back to when you were courting, you know, and when that, that first few months when you thought that girl was a divine being. And she was perfect. And you would do anything for her. And then after a couple of years, you know, you notice she doesn't have to complain a lot. 
And actually, you know, and, and, you know, the reality kicks in. And it's not that she's changed, it's just that, you know, reality is kicking in for all of us. And it's the same for the girls, ladies. I'm not, I'm not saying it's just for you. You know, the fella, he was very, he was a bold knight and he never, never, never blew his nose in front of you and all that kind of stuff. And now he makes noises all the time. All sorts of noises. But you love him. And the same is true of us as a church. We are going in the next next year. We'll have times when we annoy each other. But do you know what we can do is we can give it as a gift to Jesus. I don't know about you, but whenever I watch the Passion of the Christ and I see what Jesus suffered, and I think, Lord, I look at the things that upset me, and they're silly. They're silly. So make it a gift to Jesus. We hear about the gold frankincense of myrrh, don't we? When somebody's not done something right, just put it away yourself. And don't nag. And let it go. Because you know what? We'll do it. People won't do the jobs properly. People will leave the mess for us. The last group that used the church didn't do this right. The group that did that didn't do that right. Because we're human beings. And sometimes when we're tired, we think, I'll sort that out tomorrow. And we'll leave it alone. And we don't think about the person who comes in at the next, to the next group and maybe has a session. Maybe they've had a bad morning and they're coming and they're kind of, I didn't really want to do this this morning. And oh my word, look at the state of the kitchen. Or look at the state of the hole. And look at this and look at that and look at the other. And it can be so easy to end up all grumpy and upset. So be careful what you're looking at. What you're looking at is very important. What you focus on is very important. So Jesus gets John to focus on what the good things that are happening. And it's so important that we do the same thing. We focus on the good things that happen. I've seen new motorcycle riders hit an obstacle on the road. So we saw a guy in Manchester last year. And, uh, and he got the, he just borrowed somebody's motorbike and he was having a test drive on it and he hit like a bin lid in the middle of the road and do you know what he did? He saw the bin lid and he kept looking at the bin lid and so he drove into it you have to look at where you're going not at the obstacle if you look at the obstacle and you keep looking at the obstacles you're going to hit it and so I think that when Jesus was telling John to look at all the good things that God was doing, just a simple question for us to finish with this morning. Are we looking at the right things? Are we still thanking God for each small power, flower? Remember Paul and Silas, they've been thrown in prison. They've been flogged. Thrown in prison and flogged. Come on, let's be honest. If somebody had flogged me, I would not be a happy man. And what are they doing? They're singing hymns. Was that a natural thing to do? No, that was a supernatural thing to do. Singing hymns when you've been flogged and thrown into a cold prison is just bizarre. And yet they demonstrated the power of God. And then when, when there's an earthquake and they could escape, they still demonstrate compassion for the jailer by staying there so that he wouldn't harm himself. They're still thinking about other people when they've been whipped and thrown in jail unfairly. So, this Christmas, it'll be a busy time and we'll get lots of false ideas and we'll probably have four laps over the, the turkey and over various, uh, whether it's, you know, it's your turn, it's my turn and why don't you do this and why don't you do that. But let's try very hard to remember. Let's maybe take them as, well, Lord, I'm going to take this one for you. Lord, you, you, you took the cross for me. So if I can take just a little slight, or just a little mistake, or somebody thinking bad of me, or somebody making a mistake, or cleaning up for somebody else, as just a little sign of sharing in the, the sufferings of Jesus, well, that's a small thing. But Lord, I'm glad to do it. We're always singing, if I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. What can I give him? Give him my heart. But let's also maybe give him those times that we forgive people for their little mistakes and we cover up for one another and we don't blame one another and we love one another. And then people will know that we are Christians by our love. Let's pray together.
Father, we're so grateful for the Lord Jesus that he was willing to come and live and be born in a cattle, a cattle manger. You know, no A and E, Lord. No antenatal nurses. Just wrapped up in little blankets in the cold. That you're willing to go through all this life. Lord, you, you could have, if you'd lived as a king, it would have been less than what you, you, you had in heaven. But you gave it all up and came and lived as, as somebody poor. You came and lived among an occupied people. You, you suffered betrayal. And then were mocked and killed by the very people you'd come to save. So Lord, help us always to be thankful. To be so thankful for what you've done. But also to be thankful for those two ta few times when we're able to take a little bit of suffering. When we're able to take a, a little stripe on behalf of somebody else. And say, yeah. That's me sharing in the sufferings of Jesus. So Lord, help us to have that consideration for one another. And to be careful where we fix our eyes. To be careful where we're looking as we go through this Christmas. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. In whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together number 115. Part of the Herald Angels sing.
into the microphone. Oh, right, okay. So, nothing to show us, right? Okay. So, we'll wear Christmas jumpers next week, so if everyone might want to wear them as well, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all the fun and excitement of Christmas. Thank you for the amazing nativity story that tells us about the birth of Jesus. Thank you for sending us your son, a gift from you, into this world. As we look as we look at the lights on the tree, remind us of the light Jesus brought to everyone to this earth. When we look when we sing a song and carols, remind us of the hope that Jesus showed everyone. And as we open the gifts and presents, remind us that Jesus will was the best gift ever. Help us to share times with family and friends for this Christmas and to share the light, hope and gift of Jesus to this world. Amen. 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 Say the grace of one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you.